questioning be placed back on the uh, screen? And uh, Mr. Dixon, I'd like to direct your attention to it. Uh, in December of 2018, about one month after the Lion Air Flight 610 crash, the FAA performed this risk assessment that calculated the likelihood of future 737 MAX crashes caused by the erroneous MCAS activation. Is that correct? Yes, sir, it's correct. And this is the report that uh, issued from that analysis, correct? Yes, and, and actually my previous answer, I should elaborate. Uh, this is uh, looking at all the factors that, that went into the accident. So not only MCAS, not just but the, the, MCAS. Other, the other factors, yes. But you would admit that uh, the results show an unacceptable risk Yes, and that's why, correct, why the actions were taken. In fact, it's a risk. drastic uh, unacceptable risk, is it not? Yes, yeah, so what it's indicating to us is uh, essentially over the life, of, over about a 45-year period, that we would have an unacceptable level of risk, and so we need to take action to be able to reduce that risk to, uh, to, to the level that we want. So this is... Uh, Definitely an important document that exists within the bowels of the FAA, correct? Uh, it is a decision support tool. Remember that before uh, data my, my, like this my was... My question is that this document exists in the bowels of the FAA, correct? It exists, I wouldn't necessarily say, with. I think we're pretty aware of it at, at the highest levels of so the where, FAA now. When did uh, you the highest levels of the FAA. Well, let me put it like this. Who was it that took action on this report? And when was the first action taken? Uh, the first, well, the first action was taken just about uh, immediately, I think. Is that correct, Earl? And so what was the date? What, and what was the action taken? Um, how, would you how would you describe that? So the first action that was taken, sir, was the emergency AD even before these forms were completed. Well, I want to know, after this form was completed, what was done? Okay. Because you've said that it was a, a drastically unacceptable risk, and it was, uh, this study was performed prior to the Ethiop Ethiopian Airlines uh, yes, sir. crash which my friends on the other side, by the way, want to try to impugn that it was the Ethiopian Airlines, an African airline, uh, and their personnel who was somehow responsible for both of these crashes when this hearing is about the FAA certification process, and I resent that. Uh, but getting back to my point here, what was done about this report when it was first received by the FAA? So uh, again, th this is a tool used by our, our, our bo by a board that what meets on a regular on basis. And bef the date? yeah, before this report was even completed, it was recognized that we needed to do additional work. Okay, well, even what I'm getting to is what was done after this report was generated. Before this report was generated, the after action the was, was generated. To after the report was generated is what I'm the, getting at. There wasn't an additional action after this because the action prior to this even being completed was to redesign the system. What this report guided the, um, the board to look at was how much time would we allow Boeing to redesign the system. Well, well let, me, let me ask this question. Can either one of you admit to yourselves that the FAA made a mistake in not taking action on this uh, Tarim report uh, when it was first issued? Uh, I would say that this is something that we need to look at very closely. And, well, I mean, uh, was and a mistake made? Obviously, the, the result is not uh, satisfactory. Well, so, you just can't bring yourself to say that we made a mistake, and you weren't even there at the time. Absolutely. absolutely. This is a part of the process that needs to look at whether it's the data that goes into the decision the decision did not achieve the result that, that it needed to achieve. Now, is the fact that the FAA 
overseeing Boeing uh, uh, with 45 uh, personnel to 1,500 uh, to Boeing, uh, does that indicate that perhaps there is a problem with staffing in the FAA certification process so that we don't allow the fox to guard the hen house to the extent that it happened uh, with uh, the 737 MAX. If you could briefly answer his question, because we're over time. I think that that's something that we need to look at. It's not, ju it's not numbers as much as it is uh, the skill set within the workforce, because that, uh, that group that's overseeing the Boeing ODA has the ability to draw resources from without the agency, very similar to the way that a certificate management office oversees an airline. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Representative Miller. Thank you, Chairman DeFazio. And to all of you who lost loved ones, my heart goes out to you. I hope you have been able to be surrounded by family and friends and your faith in love and the light that it will bring you.